Hi there, my name is Pablo Requena and I'm working on this classical guitar and I am at the stage of fitting the frets. So you can see I've got all of them nearly done and what I wanted to show you in this video is a very specific job about how to fit the last two frets at the end of the fingerboard where the fingerboard meets the sound hole. Now the reason why I do that is because you know, fitting the frets is fairly straightforward, but I see so many people that what they do is that they fit the frets in the slot here at the end where, they, um, where we have two small frets rather than just one continuous one. And what most uh, students of mine want to do is just to fit it in there like that, leaving it a little bit overhanging, and then once it's fitted, then go in with a file and trim the fret down to make it flash with the ebony. Now, of course, that's, that's fine. That's a, a really good way of doing it. But I'm going to show you another way which I find that it makes the whole job a lot easier. So what I'm going to do first is to, uh, once I have the, the two frets or the two pieces of frets that I'm going to be using here, you just want to check that they're just long enough and you want them to kind of stick out a little bit. Uh, this one is a little, little short, so I'm just going to cut another one a little bit longer. Uh, it's probably long enough, but I just want to make sure. So I just got my thread wire over here, and I'm just going to cut another piece. And I'm just going to make it a few millimeters longer, like this. So this one should be fine. Yeah, that's perfect. Okay, so what we're going to do is that I've got this little jig, which I'm going to show you, and I'm going to open it up completely so that you can actually really see very well how I've done it. And you will see how simple this is, and it works really, really well every time. So, what I've done is to get an offcut of um, ebony from another fingerboard and I've done a couple of cuts and I've done this shape here as well. So you could just trace this line, cut it in the bandsaw and then with your saw make a little bit of uh, a couple of cuts. This one is already broken here. You can see this very same problem that you have here. You could have it in your fingerboard if you're not careful. So we're going to see how to avoid that. But you can see this sort of emulate what we have here already. So if you get another piece of wood, ebony is a good idea because it's quite hard and this is not going to break too easily. But basically the idea is that you get a piece like this and then drill a couple of holes so that we can make a sort of clamping um, scenario here. So we have another piece of plywood and you can see this is just very simple, more or less the same shape. And the idea is that then with a couple of bolts with wing nuts, this is very easy to um, close together and to undo it as well. So you can see this is a very simple little jig, which what's going to do is that now I can open it and I'm going to fit in each one of them. I'm going to fit one of these pieces. I'm just going to put them in so that they just stick out enough so that I can get the whole shape done in here. I don't want to bring it out too much and then find that actually there's no enough metal sticking out. The same on this other one. I'm just going to put it in place like so. And they don't go in very well, but don't worry too much because as we clamp this close, it will bring everything together. So you can see that these two, they stick out enough to be able to shape them and get them to have the same shape as the arch that we have here. So all we're going to do now is to close this 
down nice and tight and as you tighten it this is pushing the threads into the slots here and the slots are already a little bit kind of opened up so you don't need to put too much pressure but you can see that the threads are sticking out a little bit on this side so we know they're a bit longer than they need to be which is what I want the same in here but also they stick out a little bit on this side so all we need to do now is to come over to the pillar drill and over here I have a drum with uh, sandpaper I think this is uh, grid 100 and this is a little bit smaller in diameter than the sound hole itself so this will do a very good job here it's not a perfect match but it's a good size you want it to be as big as possible obviously not bigger than this diameter otherwise it's not going to work but uh, to find one that is exactly the same diameter might not be so easy so as long as it's near enough then that's good for what we want so what I'm going to do is that I'm going to fit the drill um, the drum into the into the drill here lock it up nicely like so and then what I'm going to do is that I'm going to be bringing this into this drum and the sandpaper is going to be doing the the trimming here to get it all done now I want to make sure that I go in vertical and so what I'm going to do is that I'm going to get a block um, like this one or any other block would do it to bring it near the near the drum and then it means that I can rest this on my block and do it so I'm gonna get going and see how it goes Okay, so this is starting to take shape. It's not quite there yet, but I don't want to work into them uh, into the metal too aggressively because I don't want the metal to get too hot. Because if it does, then it will it will go blue and it will soften the metal and it will lose the qualities of the metal. So it's good to do a little bit at the time and then come back to it. You can see the shape is is coming along, even though it's not quite there yet. So now that it's it's not so it's not hard really so I can come back to it and do a little bit more I'm also gonna bring the bed down a little bit so that I'm working into a different part of the sandpaper like that Okay, so these are nice and flush into here, so all we need to do is to get them out of this little jig and see what they look like when we bring them into our fingerboard, so let's do that. Now with a bit of uh, help from a set of pliers I'm going to get them out of here. You just wiggle them a bit and you can see they come out very nicely. 
and that's it. Now you can put this little jig to one side until you're ready to do the next guitar. And now we're going to be working on the frets themselves. And if I bring it over here, I can see that the shape is very nice. And when this goes in, it will follow this curve very nicely. So I don't have to be doing any actual kind of intrusive work into the guitar itself. So I'm going to show you how to fit one of them. The other one is exactly the same. And then this is all I needed to show you in this video. So we're going to work on this side. I can see that this will fit in here very nicely. But if I just go in and fit this into here, what will happen is that the tongue of the thread, because it needs to fit a little tight, it's very possible that it will break this little bit of ebony here, because ebony is kind of uh, brittle, and, and this is really with the grain going along this side, it can break very easily. So what we're going to do is that we are going to remove a little bit of the tongue right at the end of the fret, just using this uh, set of snips. So carefully, so that we don't deform anything. I'm just going to cut one bit of this, and then I'm going to remove it over there like that. So what this means now is that the tongue it's only going to reach to about here which means that this is all a lot more solid and it won't break too easily. This still can break, don't get me wrong. But if it does, we just want to save it, make sure we don't lose it, and then glue it back on with a little bit of super glue. But hopefully it won't break. And what we're going to do as well is that before we fit it in, we're going to remove this sort of bear that we got from working it with the uh, with the drum sander. So all you need to do is to get yourself a little bit of sandpaper. So I'm going to use 240. You don't need anything too coarse. Make it into a little pad. And then just work it so that you remove that um, very nasty edge that we got from the sandpaper on the drum. So, you know, it doesn't take too long. It's just a little bit, it's just fiddly, it's just small, really. That's the only difficulty here. But, you know, just take your time. And even if you round up this sharp edge in the point a little bit, that's also a good idea because it's easier to do this here at this stage than when it's fitted on the fingerboard. Okay. I'm going to take a little bit of this that is sticking up in there. Yeah, that's good. Right, so the way that we're going to fit this in now is that if I want to get the edge of the metal to line up perfectly with the edge of the wood, I might get it right, but if I get it wrong and it sticks out a little bit, then it deceives the point of everything that we've done, because then I'm going to have to go into there and do more work into the fret, which I don't want to. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to fit it in, in the wrong place, but to this side. Let me see if I can just force it in very, very little. So I'm going to bring in the fret Just bear with me, this will end up doing it, but like that. So it's not quite at the edge. It's maybe like a millimetre or, or two uh, before the final edge here. So we're going to fit it there, and then you'll see in a moment what we're going to do to get it to go in the right place. So all I need to do is to get my hammer. This is a heavy nylon hammer. I also use a normal hammer, but nylon is good because it doesn't dent um, the frets. And then I'm using a block of metal. This actually was uh, the head of a sledgehammer, a small sledgehammer. So it means that then if I put this into here, I have a good um, block to bank this against. And then I'm just going to lift it up 
And because it's already in place, I'm going to be very precise and just one assertive bang into it would do it. Like that. Right, so it needs a little bit more. And that's okay for now. So, now that it's in, you can see that this hasn't broken. This Evan is still in good shape. So what we're going to do now is that I'm going to move it sideways with a different hammer. I'm going to use this hammer this time. And you have noticed I got this protection here. I wouldn't be able to do that without it. So all I'm going to do is that I'm going to get my hammer flat into here. I'm going to hold it down with my finger because I don't want it to lift up. And then I just need to hammer it until very slowly until the edge in the fret lines up with the edge in the ebony. And that's it. So doing it this way, you can control very well how far you want to go with it. And then I'm going to check that it hasn't raised. Uh, it's it's up a little, so I'm just going to I'm going to trim it first. So with the snips, I'm going to remove the excess on this side. So all you need to do is to bring it, bring the snips right next to the ebony, and then there you are. Just cut the excess. We don't need that. And now what I'm going to do is that I'm going to come back to it with the hammer again to give it a final tap to make sure that it's well seated because I don't want the, thing, the, the fret to be too high. And I think this should be in place now. Yes, very nice. Great, so now I, off camera I will be doing the other one and this is all there is to it. It's actually, you know, it's it's fiddly so you have to be careful how you do it but doing it this way you'll find that actually you can do a really good job without compromising your instrument and you know, believe it or not, I've seen terrible disasters that can happen when you go into here with a file mm -hmm. or with other tools and so yeah it's a good idea to do all the metal work uh, or at least as much as you can before you bring the the fret into the guitar so there's more work to do here you know and there's that's not something for this video that'll be the video for another for another time and this this uh, this is another opportunity to actually remind you about the online course that or, or the course I'm selling online where I demonstrate this this job there already um, in that course in in the video about the fitting the frets I explain how to do it slightly differently in a very dif in a slightly different way but this one works very well as well so that way you have a couple of different options of how to do this job but uh, if you're interested in purchasing the line, the, the course is online, you can find it on the website, which is www.onlineguitarmakingcourse.com. So hopefully you enjoyed and you found this video helpful. So until the next one.